This is the Music History Today podcast for August 1st. On today's show, ladies and gentlemen, rock and roll. MTV starts and changes music in a big way. Plus, Jeremy speaks in class today. First up, though, on this date in 1927, country music group The Carter Family recorded for the first time. In 1934, blues great Lead Belly was released from prison after serving four years on an attempted murder charge. In 1942, Jimmy Dorsey recorded the song Charleston Alley. And also on the same day, the American Federation of Musicians went on strike and refused to record music due to what they thought of as a threat to their livelihood by the popularity of records. In 1958, Johnny Cash signed with Columbia Records after his contract with Sun Records had expired. In 1960, Aretha Franklin started recording secular music after having recorded gospel music for most of her career up to that point. In 1963, the Beatles Monthly Magazine was first printed. In 1965, Marion Faithful collapsed on stage, which led to the cancellation of the rest of her tour. In 1966, the Chamber Brothers recorded the song, Time Has Come Today. In 1968, the group Led Zeppelin was formed. In 1969, the Atlantic City Pop Festival happened. In 1971, the Sonny and Cher Comedy Hour premiered on CBS television. Also in 1971, George Harrison held his charity concert, The Concert for Bangladesh. In 1980, George Harrison started his movie production company, Handmade Films. Also in 1980, Def Leppard performed in America for the first time. In 1981, MTV began broadcasting and changed music forever. The first words that were said on the channel were, quote, Ladies and gentlemen, rock and roll, end quote. The first video was the Buggles song, Video Killed the Radio Star, of course. The second video played, by the way, was by the first female music artist to be on the channel, Pat Benatar with You Better Run. We discuss an awful lot about MTV and its impact on society and music on this week's Music History In-Depth podcast, which drops on this network probably either by the time you've heard this, if it's late in the day, or if you're listening to it within the first hour or two that this one has been released, probably an hour or two later. It is on this network, as I said, whatever you're listening or watching on please like and subscribe. It's a good episode this week. A lot of MTV on this one. In 1986, Jerry Garcia was released from the hospital after being in a coma for three weeks. In 1987, MTV Europe began broadcasting. Their very first video was Dire Straits with Money for Nothing. That also gets mentioned on the Music History In-Depth podcast. In 1987, Guns N' Roses started filming their music video for the song Welcome to the Jungle. In 1988, WCVG Radio in Cincinnati, Ohio changed their format to an all Elvis Presley format. They switched to a talk radio format a year later. In 1990, the country of seashells kicked the band UB40 out of the country after the band was arrested for marijuana possession. In 1992, the music video for Pearl Jam's song, Jeremy, premiered on MTV. We absolutely discuss this monumental, iconic music video on this week's Music History In-Depth program as well. Like I said, it's on this network. Please like and subscribe. In 1994, Michael Jackson announced that he had married Lisa Marie Presley. Also on the same day, the Rolling Stones started their Voodoo Lounge tour. In 1997, the Summer Jam concert took place in George, Washington. Yep, there's a town named George in the state of Washington because, well, why not? Salt and Peppa and Blackstreet were among the performers during the concert in George, Washington. <laughs> Clever. In 2004, the a cappella group In the Stairwell was formed. In 2006, a 30-year-old man was beaten to death while in the mosh pit at a Death Tones concert. Yikes. 
In 2012, the group Union J was formed. In 2014, the group Red Velvet was formed. Also in 2014, the James Brown biopic Get On Up, starring the late, great Chadwick Boseman, premiered in movie theaters. In 2015, Rush played their final show with Neil Peart on drums. And in 2019, the group Dice formed. We also discuss Rush's final show on the Music History In-Depth podcast. This particular podcast goes heavy on August 1st because a lot of monumental events happened on that date. In theater in 1947, the Broadway show Medium and the Telephone opened. Albums that were released on August 1st include in 1961 when Brenda Lee released her self-titled album. In 1969, Jethro Tull released Stand Up and the Bonzo Dog Band released Tadpoles. In 1972, The Scorpions released Lonesome Crow. In 1982, Aerosmith released Rock in a Hard Place. In 1983, Bette Midler released No Frills. In 1986, Bruce Hornsby and the Range released The Way It Is, their Grammy Award winning album. In 1988, Little Feet released Let It Roll. In 1994, Brian Adams released So Far, So Live. In 1995, AFI released Answer That and Stay Fashionable. Pine Top Perkins released Got My Mojo Working. And Jimmy Buffett released Barometer Soup. In 1996, Deadsy released their self-titled album. In 2000, Big L released The Big Picture. In 2001, The Carpenters released As Time Goes By. In 2006, the Jerry Garcia Band released Pure Jerry, Coliseum, Hampton, Virginia, November 9, 1991. And in 2006, the Goo Goo Dolls released their iTunes originals. Jimmy Buffett released Live at Wrigley Field. And Steely Dan released Steely Dan, The Definitive Collection. Singles that were released on August 1st in the UK include in 1985 when Sting released Love is the Seventh Wave. Meanwhile in America, in 1960, Jerry Lee Lewis released John Henry. 1963, Roy Orbison released Blue Bayou. In 1972, The Eagles released Witchy Woman and Elvis Presley did a twofer. He released It's a Matter of Time and Burning Love. In 1980, David Bowie released Ashes to Ashes. In 1984, Stevie Wonder released I Just Called to Say I Love You. In 1989, Madonna released Cherish. And in 2002, Matchbox 20 released Bright Lights. Before we continue, we'd like to tell you about the Music History In-Depth podcast, where we go in-depth on the history of some of the events from the daily version of the Music History Today podcast. The Music History In-Depth podcast drops new episodes every Tuesday in audio and video form wherever you get your podcasts. We also have the Music Halls of Fame podcast where we honor a year in music along with a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, along with who we think should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Plus, we honor a different museum, Walk of Fame or Hall of Fame. The Music Halls of Fame podcast drops every Thursday in audio and video form wherever you get your podcasts. Now, back to the Music History Today podcast. Artists who were born on August 1st include Jerry Garcia of The Grateful Dead, the composer of The Star-Spangled Banner, The American National Anthem, Francis Scott Key, Dan Donegan of Disturbed, Ashley Angel of O-Town, Adam Duritz of Counting Crows, rapper Coolio, rapper Chuck D of Public Enemy Number no. 1, Susie Gardner of L7, DJ Jaden Bosson, rapper Symphonic Miller, singer Tiffany Young, singer Ramya J, rapper FG Famous, Joe Elliott of Def Leppard, singer Michael Penn, blues man Robert Cray, Tommy Bolin of Deep Purple, and also the James Gang. Tim Bachman of Bachman Turner Overdrive, Rick Anderson of The Tubes, Boz Burrell of Bad Company, Rick Coons of The Grassroots, Patty Maloney of The Chieftains, bassist Prakash John, Paul Gray of The Damned, singer-songwriter Donnie Harrison, who is George Harrison's son, producer Denny Cordell, composer Lionel Bart. Chris Shin of Live, rapper Lil Loaded, singer J.J. Hannon, Van McMcCann of Catfish and The Bottleman, bassist Ronnie King, 
Dean Wareham of Galaxy 500 and also the group Luna, singer Sally Herbert of Banderas, Bradley Mettenbacher of Draco and the Malfoys, entertainer Andre Gagnon, and singer Ronnie Kemper. Artists who unfortunately passed away on August 1st include composer Francesco Gonzaga, who passed away in 1628 at the age of 37. Composer Friedrich Gabwitz passed away in 1805 at the age of 51. Composer Carl Stenborg passed away in 1813 at the age of 60. Cellist Peter Ritter passed away in 1846 at the age of 83. Composer Vaclav Novotny passed away in 1922 at the age of 72. Cellist and composer Kiyoshi Nobutoki passed away in 1965 at the age of 77. Jazz pianist Bud Powell passed away in 1966 at the age of 41. Composer Gian Malapiero passed away in 1973 at the age of 91. Composer Seppo Numi passed away in 1981 at the age of 49. Jazz saxophonist Wild Bill Moore passed away in 1983 at the age of 65. Pianist John Ogden passed away in 1989 at the age of 52. Trumpet player for the Stan Kenton Orchestra, Mr. Chico Alvarez, passed away in 1992 at the age of 72. Jazz trumpet player George Dixon passed away in 1994 at the age of 85. Jazz pianist Bob Talley passed away in 1995 at the age of 75. Opera singer John Lanigan passed away in 1996 at the age of 75. Singer Frida Baccaro passed away in 1996 at the age of 55. Songwriter Bill Buchanan passed away in 1996 at the age of 66. Radio disc jockey William Mercer passed away in 2000 at the age of 73. Music journalist Al Aronowitz passed away in 2005 at the age of 77. Folk singer Tommy Makem passed away in 2007 at the age of 74. Composer Douglas Townsend passed away in 2012 at the age of 90. Singer Michael Johns passed away in 2014 at the age of 35. The legendary, iconic British singer Smithsilla Black passed away in 2015 at the age of 72. Composer Anatoly Kremer passed away in 2015 at the age of 82. And Goldie McJohn of the group Steppenwolf passed away in 2017 at the age of 72. Next on the Music History Today podcast, it is August 2nd, when in 1991, Rick James takes his song Super Freak a little too literally and gets into an awful lot of trouble because of it. Thank you very, very much for listening if you're listening on the podcast or if you're watching this on YouTube or Spotify video. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share this podcast. And if you like this podcast and you want more of our podcasts, then I invite you to check out our Music Halls of Fame podcast in either audio or video form. It drops every single Thursday. You can listen to the audio version of this podcast on Apple, Anchor, Spotify, Google Podcasts, CastBox, wherever you get your podcasts from, all under Music History Today. You can also watch the video version of this podcast on either YouTube or Spotify Video, also under Music History Today. Our Facebook page is Music History Today. Our website is jamaritaniamedia.com. And our Twitter is twitter.com backslash Music History Day. Thank you very, very much for listening or watching.